If you are currently exploring for an email autoresponder for your email marketing business, let me introduce to you one of the most beginner-friendly email autoresponder out there in the marketplace, which is none other than GetResponse. These are the few things that we are going to discuss in today's video. First and foremost, why would you need this software? Secondly, why GetResponse? On top of that, we are going to talk about what exactly is an email autoresponder, GetResponse pricing, the interface of GetResponse, how to add your personalized email address into this email autoresponder, how to set up your DKIM records in order to ensure that your emails do not land into the spam folder unnecessarily, how to use API integration and what exactly it is, how to create a list within GetResponse, the difference between automation and broadcast, how to create your automation messages, how to create your email broadcast, how to conduct A-B testing, how to manually add our contacts into GetResponse, and what is the usage of a suppression list and what exactly it is, how to segment your email list manually, how to contact GetResponse support in case you have any issues, and finally, how to prevent your GetResponse account from being banned. As you guys can see, there are several points that we're gonna cover in this GetResponse video tutorial. So first and foremost, why would you need this software? Why can't we use all the free ESPs like Yahoo, Gmail to start doing our email marketing business? Now, there are several reasons for it, but the most basic one is, when you're doing email marketing, you need to create a list and separate your list according to their behaviors when you start sending your email marketing campaigns. And unfortunately, Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail is unable to do so. The usage of all these free ESPs is really meant for personal use, not so much for business use. The second basic reason is because when you are using free ESPs like Gmail, Yahoo, or even Hotmail, most of the time when you send out multiple emails to different audience, your email will get bounced. Because you're unable to authenticate to all the ESPs that you belong to an authentic human being, which is the DKIM record that we mentioned just now, which I'm going to cover in details subsequently. Let's discuss why get response. If you are in the affiliate marketing business, you need to carefully select the correct email autoresponder. There are a lot of email autoresponders out there in the marketplace that is really not affiliate marketing friendly. Even if you were to approach their customer service support, usually they will give you a very vague answers. Interestingly, get response is one of the very few selected ones that is affiliate marketing friendly. Especially if you have watched my email marketing success series, which I will leave a link over here, you will notice that when I talk about how to succeed with email marketing, especially if you are doing affiliate marketing with solo ads, you need to insert this thing called a tracking link into your respective emails. And a lot of email autoresponders out there in the marketplace are not tracking link friendly. That means they do not allow any form of redirect links. So if you really wish to build up a successful email marketing business, select carefully the right email autoresponder. What exactly is an email autoresponder? I'm sure you guys have opted into certain squeeze pages online, sometimes even without you knowing, whereby they ask you for certain information like your first name, your last name, your email address, in order to download a free ebook, that kind of thing. Shortly after, within seconds, or sometimes within one or two minutes, you will receive an email directly from that particular sender, whereby you can download the free checklist or free ebook. All these operations is done automatically by using an email autoresponder such as GetResponse. So that's the reason why the name comes about, which is called an email autoresponder. Now, of course, on top of sending automation messages like this, you can also do email broadcasts using GetResponse, which again, I will talk more in details. Next, let's talk about the GetResponse pricing. At this time of recording, which is on the 15th of July, 2023, GetResponse is having a lifetime deal of summer savings up to 40%. Now, over here, you will see that there are four different plans for GetResponse. So you have the up to 500 contacts, which is free, email marketing, marketing automation, as well as the e-commerce marketing plan. The one that I usually suggest for all my students to go for is the marketing automation. The reason for that is because on top of receiving all the features that you have within the email marketing plan, you also have things like the marketing automation, which is something that we really need. The event-based automation which is also very important, as well as the advanced segmentation. 
These are the three features that is unfortunately unavailable within the email marketing plan itself. Email marketing plan is really meant for those who just want to test out email marketing. However, if you have been following my video so far, you should by now have a pretty in-depth knowledge about what is email marketing and how to start getting successful sales online with it. So that's the reason why you need a more advanced feature within your email autoresponder because that is your main bread and butter. So that's the reason why I strongly suggest for you guys to go for the marketing automation. Over here, you can see that up to 1,000 contacts, you're investing $50 per month. Now, as your contacts grow, let's say to about 50,000 contacts, you'll be investing $305.15 per month. At this juncture, you don't have to select 50,000 contacts or even 100,000 contacts. Start off with just 1,000 contacts with the minimum investment because as your contact starts growing within get response, automatically they will charge to your credit card the difference in the amount. Which also means to say, the moment you exceed 1,000 contacts, the next tier will be 2,500 contacts and this is the amount that you'll be investing. Now, some of you might be asking, Ben, can I start off with the free plan first? If you're on a budget, definitely you can. Otherwise, I will not suggest you to do so because there are a lot of limitations, especially in terms of the number of contacts and as well as the number of newsletters that you can send per month. Now, you might be thinking 2,500 newsletters per month and 500 contacts is more than sufficient. However, if you're someone who is doing serious email marketing, you realize that 500 contacts, you are not able to get any form of sustainable sales at all. The way to start creating an account within GetResponse is to hit on this button, create a free account. Over here, they'll ask you for your full name, your email address, and the password that you wish to create for this account. Hit on create account and subsequently, they will ask you whether you wish to start off from a free account first or you wish to straight away commence with that marketing automation plan. Next, let's talk about the GetResponse interface. After you have logged into your GetResponse account, this is the general interface that you will see. You will see your tools over here, contacts, email marketing, reports, as well as some of the widgets over here on the top right. And over here, these are all the different widgets that you can create, all right? So the ones that generally you'll be using will be under the tools section. Don't worry about the contacts, email marketing, and reports. You can find everything within the tools section as well. So click on it. Over here, you have the contacts, which is the same over here, as well as your email marketing, again, which is the same over here. Autoresponders, website builder, landing pages, forms and pop-ups, so and so forth. Now, although GetResponse have their own website builder and landing page builder, I will not suggest you guys to use it. Their landing pages interface is really in the beta mode. And I've tried it myself and it's really not beginner friendly at all. It's pretty difficult for you to create a landing page within GetResponse. And on top of that, eventually, if you are really running huge amount of traffic into this landing page, what you need is a separate funnel builder software which again, you can find within my email marketing success secret series. Over here, you also have the automation function. That is the one that we need for the marketing automation plan. Integrations and API, again, is something that we're gonna talk about later. Emails and domains, how to add your personalized email address. So as you guys can see, the general dashboard is not difficult to maneuver at all. Everything is within the tools feature itself. Now let's discuss how to add your personal email address in to get response. First and foremost, hover your mouse over to Tools, click on it and scroll down, you will see Emails and Domain. So click on that. Now over here, they will ask you to add an email address. Click on that. So this is the name and the email address that you can go ahead to insert. Subsequently, GetResponse will send an email into this email address. All you need to do is just to hit the verify button within that email. And that is how easy it is to add a personalized email address into GetResponse. If you do not know how to purchase a domain as well as how to add a personal email address into it, check out my email marketing success secret series again. Now we are going to talk about this thing called a DKIM record. When you're doing email marketing, the last thing that you want to see is all your email marketings that you're sending to your email list are landing into the spam folder. So by setting up your DKIM record within GetResponse is a very critical step in order to authenticate your domain. For the case of this account, which is one of my students' account, you can see that her email address has been added, jasmine at jazzrecommend.com. The email address status has been confirmed because we have already verified this email address by clicking on the link when GetResponse sent that email into this email address. The way to settle the DKIM is very simple. 
After you have verified the email address, GetResponse will send you a key. The key will look something like this. This is a DKIM key. So all you need to do is to enter this DKIM into your domain DNS settings. And remember, this DKIM key is a TXT record within your domain DNS. Because when it comes to DNS, in case you guys are not familiar with it, there are several different fields like for example, the SRV field, the CNAME field, the TXT field, so and so forth. The one that we need to enter this DKIM record into our domain DNS is the TXT record. Now let's move on to talk about API integration. What exactly is API integration? You might realize by now that I'm using a lot of technical jargons when it comes to this GetResponse tutorial. The reason for it is, I assume that you have already watched my entire email marketing success secrets videos, which is from part one all the way to part five. So from there, you should have some basic knowledge about what is email marketing. API refers to a connection between two different softwares. Just think of it as when these two different softwares exist on different servers created by different companies, but yet you want to create a way for them to communicate with each other. So that is what we mean by API integration. So what exactly is the kind of software that GetResponse need to integrate with? Well, one of the very common one will be your Funnel Builder software. Because if you think about it, when you yourself visited that website, when you entered your name and your email address to that website owner, why is it that suddenly you are able to receive this email? Because the integration between that website builder software as well as the get response or whatever email autoresponder that website owner is using has already been integrated in a way whereby whenever you insert your contact information like your first name, last name, and your email address, all this information will automatically be collected within their email autoresponder. And in our case, get response. So there must be a way for the funnel builder software and get response to talk to each other. The way to find that API key within get response is hover over the tools, scroll down, you will see integrations and API. Click on that. Over here, you will see a lot of different fields. Click on API. And here you can generate this API key. So you can name your key anything like, for example, I'll just call it a uh, funnel builder. Right? You can use any funnel builder of your choice. And the one that I recommend to all my students is Lead Pages, which is a very cheap alternative to ClickFunnels and yet able to achieve everything that you need to do online. So I'll click Generate. Now over here, you will see the one that I've just created, Funnel Builder. This is the entire API key that we need. So all you need to do is just to copy this API key and plug it into whatever Funnel Builder software that you're using. How to create a list within GetResponse. Before we talk about how to create a list, let me share with you guys what exactly is a list within GetResponse. Like what I mentioned at the beginning of this video, you need an email autoresponder because you're going to segment your contacts into different lists according to their behavior. Now, let me give you an example. Let's say you have a context of 100,000 people. Out of these 100,000 people, some of them might have opened your emails in the last 30 days. So in order to differentiate between this group of people that have opened your email in the last 30 days, they are generally more engaged with your emails, we need to create a separate list called Openers 30 Days. So the way to look at list within an email autoresponder is different pockets of your contacts according to their behavior. Of course, you can also create another list called a buyer's list. That means people who have actually purchased any form of offers that you have created within your email. So the way to create a list, cover the tools again, click on contacts. So you see they have the list, search, segments, reports, list hygiene, suppression list, custom fields, import statistics, and text. Not all of these we need to use, some of them. So over here, click on create a list. Now, the list name, remember, list name has to be in small capital letter and there's no spacing that is allowed. If you wish to create some form of spacing, use underscore. Like for example, top context is not allowed. All right, because there's a spacing here. So all you need to do is just to put a underscore over here and click on create. So you have the top contact created. So this is a list within your GetResponse account. If you wish to delete the list, very simple, hover your mouse to these three vertical dots, click on the delete button, delete the list, yes. So the list has been deleted. 
What is the difference between an email automation and email broadcast? Email automation is generally set by yourself once and automatically all the emails will be sent. You can create email automation messages for 365 days, that means one whole year long, or you can create email automation for seven days, 14 days, 30 days, entirely up to your individual marketing campaigns. The ones that I suggest for my own students to do is to create a 45 or even a 90 days email automation, depending on whether you're promoting a low ticket, mid ticket or high ticket offer. So what exactly is an email broadcast? Email broadcast is whereby you are going to send specific emails to different pockets of your list. For example, if you wish to send emails only to your buyer's list, so that is where you cannot use email automation because you're going to select specifically this list. Of course, some might argue that you can also do this within your email automation campaigns. It can be done. But however, just to simplify the whole thing, I will use email automation campaigns generally for all my initial traffic that's coming in, which means to say I will send them my welcome message, I will send them my promotional message, my free value information message, as well as differentiating between whether they are an opener or whether they are a clicker. So that is why I need that automation tool within the automation marketing campaigns plan that is within get response. Now, for my email marketing campaigns, that is where you have to send it manually. You can do it once a week, once a month. It's entirely up to you. So for example, you might want to send certain specialized message like what, like what I said just now to your buyers. So you have to select only the buyer's email list. Second difference that you will see is when you are sending email broadcasts, you can select the date and the time that you wish this email to be sent out. However, when it comes to email automation, you have already created certain pre-selected criteria. For example, after your welcome email has been sent out to all your initial traffic that's coming into get response account, you are going to wait for one day, then send the next email. Or you're going to wait for two days, then send the next email. So everything has been automated at the back end. And that is where email automation comes in. Moving on, we are going to talk about how to create automation messages, which is one of the very important steps within GetResponse. Now that you understand the difference between automation as well as email broadcast, you will start to see why email marketing can create a form of passive income because of all your email automation messages. First thing first, hover your mouse over the tools again. Move down and you will see automation. Click on that. I'm going to create a workflow. Now you will see that GetResponse already has a lot of different templates for you to use. For example, the welcome templates, lead qualifying templates, engagement and retention template, post purchase, abandoned cart, online courses, so and so forth. So these are all the different templates that you have. And a lot of all these templates are only available if you are on the automation marketing plan. Now I'm going to show you guys how to create a template from scratch. So we're going to create build from scratch. Click on start now. And you don't have to bother about all these things because I'm going to show you how to do it. Now this draft, this is not something that your email list is going to see. This is for your own record. So I'm going to call it testing. Over here, you can see what exactly is that trigger that you wish to start this workflow. So for my case, I'll click on subscribes. So this is the entire page whereby you're going to create your email automation. So very simple, just follow along with me. Now like I say, don't worry, get response is a very beginner friendly interface. The first thing you're going to do is to hover your mouse to over here, click on it. And on the right, they will ask you, which is the list that you wish this workflow to start? You can select any list or you can select any specific list. So for this workflow automation, I'm going to create the welcome messages followed by all the promotional messages. So I'm going to select the particular list that all my traffic is coming in. So in this case, I will select this one. Okay, lead pages. Select the subscription method. They have API method, form, contact import, so and so forth. You can click on any method because all these contacts that's coming into this particular list of mine are all fresh traffic. Now, next thing, hover your mouse to add elements. Scroll down. What is the next thing that we want to do whenever somebody opt into our squeeze page? We want to send them a welcome message. So over here, I'm going to drag send message all the way down here. Okay, the moment you release your mouse, you'll see that this interface on the right change again. Now, hover back again to add element. You will see that the send message is over here under actions. All right, so click on this. 
Now, if you scroll up, they will ask you to use message layout from automation or select a message. Don't bother about that. Just go ahead and create a new message. So this is where you're going to start drafting your email. All right, so I'll call this welcome one, which is our very first email. Under the link list, you don't have to bother about that because we have already selected the trigger, which is anyone via any form of subscription into our lead pages list. From and reply to email address, we have already talked about how to add in our personalized email address just now. Subject line, I'm just going to put it as test. All right, you don't have to use the AI subject line generator. If you are concerned about what kind of email should I be using, what subject line that has the best open rate, what kind of email body content that can improve my click-through rate, refer to the link in the description below this video, whereby I share with you how to obtain 16,000 email swipes for just the price of a McDonald's meal. Going back again to drafting the email, we are going to head on to design and content, click on design message. All right, we are going to use a blank templates, even though GetResponse has a lot of different templates over here, but most of them will just reduce your loading speed because of the immense amount of graphics that they are using within the email. So we're just going to create a very simple email, click on blank templates, and over here, click on blank templates and use template. You can see that there's a logo on top. If you have a company logo, feel free to put it in. If not, click on this logo on the right, scroll down, click on this button and remove the show logo. There'll be no unnecessary blank fill on top of your email. Now over here, the main section is where we are going to create this email. All right, so on the right, hover up, click on layout. On text, click and drag into this area. So this is where you are going to start putting our first welcome email. I can type down there like, for example, hi there, welcome to my family. Okay, just a very simple one. After you are done drafting your email, click on next. Scroll down and click on save and finish. All right, so your email has been drafted. Now, the next thing you need to do is to hover your mouse over to this checkpoint here. Take mark, drag, connect the two. All right. Once you have successfully connected these two, you will see that both of them have lighted up. When they are lighted up means this is ready. All right. The next thing we need to do is after we have sent the first email, we need to wait for one day before we send the next email. You're not going to send so many emails after one another, right? Of course, you can say that, for example, after I send up the first welcome email, um, after six hours, I want to send a second email. You can also do so. Now, let me show you guys. Hold your mouse down. Under actions, you see this wait element. Drag over here. Release. Connect these two points. Now it's lighted up again. So click on the wait for one day. Now, now they're asking you how to delay the next action. Wait for, wait until, or whatsoever. So we're going to select with four. Now you can choose in terms of number of days. So for this case, it will be one day, number of hours, and number of minutes. After the wait, the next step occurs on. Please make sure that this is all checked. So we're going to send emails every day, all right? Every single day from Monday to Sunday. So for our case, we're going to select one day. If you wish to, you can select six hours and remove that one day to zero. So this will be six hours. All right, so let's change it back to one day. Okay, so this one day again. Now, after that, we are going to send a second message or rather the second email. Over here, click on send message again. Drop it down. Click here. On the right, scroll up, create new message. Okay, so over here, we are going to say new message one. Scroll down, subject line. Again, I'll just put on there, testing for new message one. Okay. Design message. Click on blank templates. Use this template for the blank template. Again, click on here to remove the logo if you don't have any. All right, click back to here. Scroll up on right, on the right, back to layout. Bring the text over to the main section here. And this is where we're going to start typing our first message that's being sent out after the welcome message. Say, hi there. I don't 
know if you have heard of this it is simply mind-blowing check this out regards Benjamin if you wish to insert any form of link into your email highlight this entire portion usually I will bold it on the link section click on it and this is where you insert your affiliate link or tracking link then hit the insert button all right so once you're done so you notice that this thing will change into blue for my case i've not added any link but let me show you guys uh let's use google.com as an example okay click on insert now you see that it turns into blue if you wish to increase the entire font size you can highlight the entire thing here this is the font size now it's at 14 you can change it to 18 to make it bigger and don't worry when your email is short, concise, and straight to the point of what I explained in my email marketing success secret series, it will definitely be mobile friendly. You can also change the entire font type. Again, highlight this entire portion. Now it's Arial. You can choose different kinds of font, but I would suggest you guys to just keep it to Arial. All right. If you wish to change certain things like a text color, you can also do so. Uh, for example, I don't know if you've heard, heard of this. You can change the text color to red right usually i don't bother about all this text color i just leave it to black okay then click on next scroll down save and finish so your first message has been sent after your welcome message again remember to connect the two dots now before i connect it take a look over here it's not lighted up but once i connect this now it's lighted up let me show you guys something very interesting over here, you will see this element called message open question mark. So let's bring this field down. What this field is trying to say is, did any of your contacts open this particular email? So if, let's say, first and foremost, please connect the two dots. Huh? So let's say if this contact actually did open the email. So what we are going to do is we are going to send them another message. Okay, and this is will be the second welcome message. But what if the person did not open the email? So what you can do then is to send another message. Send another message over here and connect these two. All right? And this email will be something whereby you can draft something like, I noticed you have not opened my previous email. I wonder if this is something that you are really interested in. All right? Please proceed over here. Now, for this message, because this person has already opened the email, you can proceed with your second promotional message so this is how you can easily use the entire workflow automation within get response now for my case i'm not going to draft all these emails i already shown you how to do it for the email body content and subject line you can always head over to the 16,000 email swipes that i have prepared for you guys for a very nominal cost via the link in the description box below this video so i'm going to delete away these two okay now Let's say, assuming your entire workflow is completed. The next thing you need to do is to click on Save and Publish and click on Save and Exit. After you have created Save and Exit, remember that currently this entire workflow is still under the draft mode. All you need to do is to click on this button and publish the whole thing. If not, this entire workflow is not going to work. So for my case, I don't need this workflow. I'm just going to delete the entire thing. All right, so the workflow has been deleted. Now I'm going to show you guys how to use this workflow automation to automatically create your clickers tag as well as your openers tag. In order to create your openers tag, click on create workflow. Build from scratch. Again, you don't need all this. Now, this is where you can name it, for example, openers. Now, don't worry, this one, you can leave a spacing because it's not creating a list for this case. You're just creating a name for your automation workflow. Once you're tapping your openers tag, instead of choosing this subscribe, we're going to choose opens a message. This is a very simple workflow, but yet a very critical one. So on the right, when you scroll down, you will see this text element. Again, click and drag and drop it below here. Connect these two. Click on assign a tag. And we are going to select a tag. For my case, for this account, this openers tag has already been created. 
for your case, all you need to do is to hit on create tag, enter the name and click add. So of course, you're going to type in openness. All right, then click add. Now, however, for my case, like I said, I already have it. So I just have to assign this tag here. Now you notice that once it's being assigned, automatically it lights up again. Next thing, save and exit again. And remember, like what I mentioned just now, remember to click on the draft to publish it. How to create a clicker's tag? People who have actually clicked on any link in your email. Again, create a workflow. Build from scratch. All right, we're going to name this clicker's tag. Clicks a link. Scroll down. Again. Bring the tag over here, connect the two, click on assign the tag. Now, they'll ask you to select a tag. If you don't have the clickers tag, just create a tag. For my case, I have it. Click on it, assign a tag, save and exit. Okay, then you remember to publish the whole thing. Now you have learned how to create automation messages. You have also learned how to use the automation function within GetResponse to automatically assign the openers and clickers text to your contacts whenever they open any of your emails or click any links within your email. These are the three main functions of why we need that automation tool. Let's now talk about how to create your email broadcast. In order to create your email broadcast, hover over the tools and click on email marketing. So previously we were using automation, but now we have to click on email marketing. So we are going to select create newsletter how do you want to create your email? Don't use the AI email generator, just create by myself. Now you notice that it looks very similar over here, correct? So let's say for example, you are promoting this program called Passive Income Profits, which is my own mentorship program. Okay, Passive Income Profits, one. So this is the first email broadcast that you are sending out. Subject line, I will say, this might interest you. All right. Of course, I will add some personalization by adding their first name over here, comma. Now, under recipients, you can choose which is the particular list that you wish to send the emails to. Are you going to send it to your general email list? Are you going to send it to your buyers list? Or you can also create different segments over here. All right. Now, for my case, I'm going to just select this one, click on Add. All right, again, you can design the whole messages as per normal. When it comes to email broadcast, after you have created your message, you will notice that there is this function whereby they ask you, when would you like to send your message? Are you going to send it immediately or you wish to schedule this to be sent later? So let's say we click on Schedule for Later. It will come up with a date and time as well as the time zone. The time zone will depend on where exactly you are situated when you first created this account. For my case, I'm located in Singapore, so it automatically gives me the Singapore time zone. Of course, over here, you can choose different form of time zone as well. Okay, and you can select the date as well as the time that you wish to send out this email. You can also select this function, which is the perfect timing. The perfect timing option within GetResponse when you're sending email broadcasts is pretty useful if you wish GetResponse to decide when to send this email for you. You might be wondering, I already selected the time and date. Do I still need the perfect timing? Get response algorithm is able to track for you individual context. What time are they most likely to open your emails? So the perfect timing will help you in terms of your email deliverability and increase your open rates. And this is a very interesting function within Get Response that I do not see in any other email to responders. Once everything is done, all you need to do is to click on the schedule button over here. You notice that this schedule button is not lighted up at this point in time because I have not dropped any message yet. Once you have finished designing your message, this will be lighted up and all you need to do is to click on this button and your email broadcast is ready to be sent. Now we are going to talk about A-B testing. A-B testing your email marketing campaigns is very important, especially when you do not know for a start what sort of subject lines, what sort of email body content will resonate best with your target audience. A-B testing can only be done when you are sending email broadcasts, not for email automation within GetResponse. And remember, when you are doing A-B testing, you 
test one element at a point in time, which means to say you either retain the same subject line and test different email body content, or you retain the same email body content but you test different subject lines. The way to do so within get response, again, very simple. Hover your mouse over to Tools, click on Email Marketing, and you'll reach this stage here. So instead of just the newsletter, whereby we go ahead and create newsletter, over here, you're going to click on A-B Test. All right, so create A-B Test. So you can either choose, I want to test the subject line, which means to say I'm going to use the same email body content, but I want to test different subject lines. Or you can test the content body, but retain the same subject line. Every single test, you can choose up to five different variations. To make things simple, we're just going to test the subject line for this case. Click on Create Test. Everything looks exactly the same. Do you realize that? It looks all exactly the same. The only difference is over here under subject line. So you're going to test two different forms of subject lines over here. If you want to do multiple testing, you can click on Add Another Subject Line, and this will be the third subject line, the fourth subject line, and the fifth subject line. All right, so all in all, you can test up to five different variations like what I mentioned just now. How to add context manually? Remember just now we mentioned about API integration, whereby whenever anybody opt into your squeeze page by giving you their information, their email addresses, their last name, first name, automatically you'll be collected into get response. However, there will be certain situations whereby you need to add the contact manually into get response, which has not gone through the normal process. Now, first and foremost, hover your mouse over the tools, Click on Contacts. Now you see all your lists over here and how many subscribers you have in the respective list. So let's say I wish to add one contact into this list itself. So I'll click on Add Contacts over here. They ask you to select the list. For my case, will be this one. And they also ask you whether you wish to add the autoresponder cycle. Just leave it alone because we did not create any autoresponder messages. The one that we did was using the automation function within the response. Now, how do you wish to add the context? We're going to use it one by one manually, or you can upload an entire file. For our case, we're going to add it one by one. All you need is the email address and the name, and click on, I have permission to add this person to my list, and then click on Add Contact. Now, let's talk about what is a suppression list. When you're doing email marketing, especially when you have a large email list, there will be instances whereby people are actually opting in again and again to your squeeze page, but yet, interestingly, when you receive emails from them, they send you certain nasty messages or they say they do not wish to receive all your email promotions. But yet you wonder why is this email always being added into my autoresponder via API? So these are the email addresses that you're going to add on to your suppression list because if they keep on reporting spam to your email, to all these ESPs, especially with Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, so and so forth, it's going to affect your email deliverability eventually. So you need this suppression list within GetResponse to tell GetResponse that, hey, if this person ever enters into my email list again, we are not going to send them any emails, even if I've selected the list whereby this email list was in. Head over to Contacts, and over here you will see Suppression List. Click on that, and you're going to click on Create Suppression List. Firstly, you're going to give your suppression list a name, and I will say, do not send. Okay? Now, this is where you're going to add in all the email addresses. Let's say, for example, abc at gmail.com. So let's say this person is one of the person who send you nasty email messages that they do not want to receive any more email promotional campaigns from you. Just add an email address in. Then next, um, def at yahoo.com. Also possible. All right. Just keep on adding into it. Finally, click on save suppression list. Don't worry when your suppression list is growing. In fact, it's helping your email deliverability. For example, currently my email list is close to about 100,000 people. My suppression list is close to almost 4,000 people. So it is normal that your suppression list will grow. Just let it be. In fact, if you do not have any form of suppression list, it only means that you are not doing your email marketing well. How to segment your email list manually? Segmenting your email list is also very important because we only want to deal with people who are responsive towards our email marketing campaigns. At the same time, they have exhibited behavior whereby they are opening our emails or they are clicking on our emails so that when we send our email broadcast, we can target and send to certain segments of our email list. In order to create all the different segments within our email list, head over to search within contacts because we are going to find out who are the ones that is 
fulfilling our certain criteria. Now over here, click on Advanced Search. You will see that they have this Add Condition as well as Save as Segment option. We are going to click on Add Condition. So the criteria, you can choose the contact details, contact actions, the text, so and so forth. Okay, so the text will be the one that just now we have created, clickers or openness. Now at the same time, you can also choose that, for example, you wish the geographical location, the city is at where. Okay, or you can choose that, for example, the country is at where. Let's say United States or whatsoever. You can also choose the contact actions. For example, let's say the automation, and we are going to select, let's say, who are the ones that have opened our welcome message, which is welcome one, then click on the apply button. Subsequently, get response will auto populate for you all those people who have opened your welcome message. And the next thing you need to do is to save all these people as a segment and name your segment accordingly. Your segment is also very important because whenever you create email broadcasts, like what I say, you can send it to different segments. And the way to do so is over here on recipients, click on add recipients, you have the list option as well as the segment option. Let's say you have created multiple different segments according to the criteria that you wish to create. That's where all your segments will appear here and you can choose which particular segment you wish to send this email broadcast to. We are approaching towards the end of this video and now I'm going to share with you how to approach GetResponse contact in case you have any questions or doubts about using the software. In GetResponse interface, the way to contact their customer service support is very beginner friendly. Let's say even if you hover back again to the main dashboard or you go over to contacts, all right, you will notice that this button is always here on the bottom right. So click on this button if you wish to contact the customer service. Over here, put in your name as well as the email address and start the chat. One thing good bugger response is their customer service is literally 24 by 7. There's no need for you to wait for like some softwares like one day, two days to receive the solution to whatever problems that you have. Finally, let's now talk about how to prevent your account from being banned within GetResponse. There are two main reasons why GetResponse will ban a certain account. Number one, you are not authenticating your domain and your email address properly. You are not warming up your email address properly. Most of your emails are landing into the spam and it's affecting the entire IP pool of GetResponse. Even if this happens, usually what GetResponse will do is to penalize and put your account into a bad IP pool. Thereby, every time when you send out your emails, you realize that your open rate is very low. And the only way to rectify it is within my email marketing success secrets videos, you can check on one of the certain part of it, which is how to improve your email open rates. The second main reason on why GetResponse will ban a certain account is you are using all the fake email addresses. This is usually caused unintentionally. But let me share with you guys how to do it intentionally so that you can intentionally avoid it. There are a lot of sellers out there on the internet space selling you cheap email lists. For example, $5, $10, you can get 500, 1000 email lists. A lot of people think that by getting this kind of email list, they can bypass the huge cost of investing into solo ads, paid traffic. Not true. Have you ever wondered why these people are selling at such a cheap price? Because a lot of these email addresses are fake email addresses or else is even if they are real, these people are not in the particular niche that you're interested in or even worse, they have never given you any permission for you to send them promotional emails. So you think that you are being smart by purchasing all these email addresses and putting it into an email to responder. When you start sending out all these emails, you will receive a lot of spam complaints. And eventually, get response have no choice but to ban this entire account. And that's not what we want. So when you are building your email marketing business, Please make sure that the quality of your leads, which is the quality of your traffic source, is also something that you need to really pay a lot of attention into. In case you do not know where to obtain quality traffic source, you can always check out my own link in the description below this video, whereby I provide 100% United States only buyer premium traffic. On top of this, if you're somebody who is really serious about wanting to build a sustainable email marketing business and need some form of coaching or guidance, Again, I've left the links to all my coaching programs in the description below this video and I'll see you again in my next recording. Take care.